Hey YouTube, my name is Robert, and I'm here to review stuff. That's me! The only explanation I can give for having seen today's movie is that it was on a whim. It's a third part in a series that I found entirely mediocre, but they were at least some pretty dumb fun. But I had a couple of days off and I wanted to see as many movies in the theater as I could, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that I saw this movie because it was there. And that movie is Riddick. Years after the events of Chronicles of Riddick, a bunch of writers got together and said, well that didn't work, I guess we should just remake the first one. People like that one. Our anti-hero, the man named Richard B. Riddick, is sitting pretty in his role as the Lord Marshal of the Necromongers. But Riddick is discontent in his soft life of banging hot chicks. So he decides to set out to look for his planet, Furia. Which is Fury with an A on the end. But instead of arriving at Furia, he gets abandoned on a planet that is decidedly not Furia. It's more like Irktia. Annoyedia. Mildly peeved dia. He manages to survive the harsh conditions on this island and even adopts a little devil dog. But his vacation is ruined when he sees a rainstorm approaching that's awakening a bunch of scorpion-like creatures called mud demons. Riddick decides that it's time to leave, so he activates an emergency beacon that attracts the attention of a couple of mercenary groups, one led by a man named Santana, including people like Diaz and Luna, and another more professional group led by Boss Johns, and including people like Dahl and Moss. But these mercenary groups can't possibly need two spaceships, so Riddick decides to use his particular set of skills to cut down the amount of mercenaries so they can safely fit into one spaceship and he can escape in the other one before the mud demons arrive and kill all of them. Well this sure was another Riddick movie. It was fun enough, but it didn't have a whole lot more to offer than that. To me it really felt like a rehash of the first movie. Riddick is stranded on a planet, some mercenaries capture him, but then decide to release him because there's a bigger threat on the planet and it's usually brought about by a weather condition, such as night or rain. And then Riddick badasses it up and manages to survive with a couple of people, usually three. They did seem to realize that their dialogue probably wouldn't be that great, and so they kept it scarce for the first 15 minutes of the movie. And I thought that was interesting, but then I thought it was disappointing because when the dialogue came back it was a corny line like, There are bad days and there are legendary bad days. This is one of those. That's pretty deep, man. The best I've been able to come up with is there are bad days and there are the most not good times days. I also like that at one point someone makes the claim that Riddick is going to be able to watch his own head fall into a box that they've brought along to claim the reward. Really? He's going to watch his own head do something. Do you think about the words before they come out of your face? The real problem I have with this movie is that it wasn't overflowing with the action necessary to overcome its story limitations. I just started getting bored around the midpoint of this movie. The action when it happens is decent, but it's all basically just to show off how badass Riddick is. Like how people are talking about how they can't find Riddick and then the camera pans up to see him eating almonds on top of their spaceship and they're completely unaware of his presence. Because he's badass. And the movie also seems to think that the most badass thing someone can do is removing their goggles. Almost every time they show Riddick, he's removing his goggles. I feel like you could make a drinking game out of it if you really wanted to die of alcohol poisoning. Visually, the movie is pretty great. The thing I thought most about was the little devil dog that he was raising. They actually put that together really well. And it was exceedingly cute for a puppy that seemed like it was spawned in hell. But the whole dog subplot was a bummer to me for a couple of different reasons. The first one happened because the very first time I saw that dog, I expected an I Am Legend moment later on in the movie. And the second was because it seems entirely out of character for Riddick to be a happy pet owner. It really doesn't help the character look badass to see him playing with and having conversations with his devil dog. And all those playtime with puppy moments went on a little bit too long. I kinda understand it because they wanted to build this relationship just in case something out of I Am Legend happened later on, but it also started getting a little tedious. The performances in this movie are exactly what you'd think they'd be. Vin Diesel is exactly Vin Diesel. Nothing super fancy, but he gets the job done, all while talking like he's being choked to death by his neck meat. We play for blood. However, I did think it was strange that he spends the first half of the movie preparing to fight one mud demon, and then the second half of the movie cutting through mud demons like they were paper. Jordi Molo was also in this movie, and he succeeded in his intention to be an unlikable douche. That's what he was trying to be, though, and he did it. Some of us do it by accident. But he was such a screw-up early on that Boss Johns has to take control of the entire situation from him, but then dude didn't even throw it back in their face when Riddick took the two power notes for the spaceships out of a locker in the room where Johns' entire team was standing. That's a pretty big fuck-up. I also like Katie Sackhoff in the movie and I liked her boobs even more. 
The only weird thing about her was that her character kept throwing out the fact that she was a lesbian like it was important to the movie at all. And since we're on the subject of boobies, I don't know who the actress was, but congrats to that one chick for going full frontal in the beginning of the movie. But that also got me thinking, they implied that Riddick had sex with these necromonger chicks all Kratos style in the movie? If you have sex with a necromonger, is that necrophilia? So that's all I have for you guys about Riddick. It's a decent enough movie and I could recommend that you watch it, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's important enough that you have to make it to the theaters to do so. You can wait for a rental. That's all I have for this week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And if there's anything you'd like me to review, don't forget to leave it in the comments below or on my Facebook fan page. So that's all for this week. My name is Robert, and Riddick has just been reviewed. These are all foggy.